Hello YouTube, I am finally back with another Thunder video for everybody, but first I want to apologize for the long break between uploads. In the midst of an existential crisis, I've been reconsidering my approach to the content, and to keep a long story short, I'll be experimenting a lot more with shorts. I'll talk for one minute on the Thunder, on other teams, on draft prospects, so be on the lookout for those. And I know not everyone has a tendency to watch shorts, but don't worry, I'll still try to to get out at least one longer video a month. So that's what's changing for the channel, but what is changing for the Thunder? Well, it's actually a couple of things. The biggest one, as you might have heard by now, it's likely the Thunder have found another star guard to pair next to Shea. Back during Summer League, I saw flashes of what he's doing right now, but I never expected for Jalen Williams to show the consistency that he's performing with, and the absurd confidence that he's shown in himself from day one. J-Dub recently went through a 14 game stretch, where he was scoring over 20 points per game on 67.2% true shooting. Now that of course looks really nice, but just how high is that number? Well it's high enough that no rookie has ever done it. The highest true shooting percentage over a 14 game span with a minimum of 20 points per game by a rookie was actually Shaq at 66.6% and actually ended up winning rookie of the year. And rookies normally aren't this effective, efficient, and composed on both sides of the court. Usually you draft players that have a set of skills that translate on offense or defense or they can do a little of everything but they have lower ceilings. Very rarely do rookies show flashes of being a problem on both ends, and it's even more rare that they go from flashes to being completely expected. The Thunder have one of those guys. In past videos, I've gone into how Jalen Williams does it, so I won't repeat myself too much. It's instincts, his handle, his aggression, his active and ridiculously long wingspan, he has good positioning, court vision, and a great assist to turnover ratio, his three-point shooting continues to climb, his energy and overall vibes, pretty much everything you can think of of, he has brought to the Thunder and is one of the league's best rookies at doing. One aspect I don't see mentioned very often is how built he is for a 21 year old. Here he is next to Jalen Brown at around his age. Jalen Brown was definitely more muscular, a bit more shredded, but to me it looks like they have a very similar build. With his strength and obscene wingspan, J-Dub can defend most players on the court at any time, including centers. It's actually pretty fun comparing Jalen Brown's and J-Dub's stats from their age 21 season. Brown was a sophomore then, and although he has a slight edge in points, free throws, and three-point percentage, J-Dub is performing better in just about every other category in advanced stat. Of course, context and role are important, but the point I'm trying to make is that Jadab is really freaking good right now. Like, I'm a future star good, and he's letting everybody know. He's been climbing up the rookie of the year ladder and is now in second right after Paolo Bancaro, who started off the season very strong, but has hit a bit of a rookie wall since the new year, especially in terms of his efficiency. It'll be interesting to see how close the race ends up being, because if Jadab keeps putting up these stats, I think there's a small but real chance that he snatches the award from Bancaro. But truthfully, I doubt he wins it, just because Paolo's usage and role is so pronounced in Orlando. And that's okay. Just having a rookie be in that conversation as a top two or three guy in their class is a big boost to the Thunder's rebuild and their championship hopes. Although Dub is one of the biggest reasons the Thunder have been pretty decent this year, he's not the only reason. I recently realized how many guys on the Thunder were ridiculously good at very specific and very useful stats that all directly relate to the four factors I've talked about in the past. For example, Jay Will, our big man from Arkansas, despite playing only in a portion of the season, he's already leading the NBA in charges taken. In second place, right after him, Kenrich Williams. And then you have Lou Dort. Everyone knows him for his defense, but what they don't necessarily know is that he's leading the league by far in offensive fouls drawn that aren't through receiving a charge. So that's already three Three guys on the team that are amazing at generating opponent turnovers, a giant piece of the complicated puzzle that is the Thunder's defense. 
And finally, you have Shea, who we know has become elite at getting to the line and hitting his free throws, but he's also high on a lot of defensive charts. For example, one that I've mentioned in the past is his stocks, steals plus blocks. He has the most of any guard in the league. He's also tied for third in deflections per game, and he's also leading the league in loose balls recovered per game. All these little things, and there's probably more, add to turnovers. That's how the Thunder beat you. Death by a thousand paper cuts. It's all those small edges that these special players are giving us that offset the lack of free throw shooting and lack of vertical rim protection. Our guys are protecting the rim just in a very different way. And that's how they've got into this position they're in now, as well as having one of the better coaches in the league of course. As for what the last weeks of the season and the plane hold, I have close to no clue. OKC could exceed expectations as they have been or they could totally flame out due to inexperience. Or due to their weaknesses being magnified in these final high intensity games. I think the Thunder do have what it takes to climb a little bit more in the West standings and maybe even skip the play-in but it's gonna be tough. In reality, it's all about the lineups and what players have gotten more minutes. However, something that's really stuck out to me is that despite Mike Muscala being traded and Kenrich Williams being injured, our young guys have been able to look genuinely solid out there, which we weren't able to say very often in the last two seasons before this one. In my opinion, this marks a before and after in the Thunder's rebuild, where before we were in pure talent accumulation mode, and now we're sifting through that talent and a lot of those players are rising to the top in meaningful competitive games of consequence for a chance to get into the postseason. As usual, it's incredibly hard to predict the team's performance, but what do y'all think? Is the Thunder making the play-in? What about the playoffs? And did you expect it to happen so soon? Let me know in the comments and as always, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I'm trying to get to 600 subs and it would be awesome if you could help out. Thanks for watching and remember there is room for you in this world. Catch you next time.